tips and tricks for performing a salpingectomy during laparoscopic hysterectomy. For hysterectomies performed at our institution, we use a four-port configuration consisting of a 10 to 12 millimeter umbilical trocar placed using open technique, two 5 millimeter lateral lower quadrant ports placed under direct visualization, and one 5 or 10 12 millimeter suprapubic port placed under direct visualization. Salpingectomy can be performed either before or after securing the uterine blood supply. Performing the salpingectomy prior to control of the uterine blood supply is ideal when the uterus is small because the fallopian tubes are not placed on excessive tension. This technique also works well when the fallopian tubes are not affected with significant adhesive disease. Lastly, this approach generally does not require the use of a surgical assistant. The surrounding pathology dictates where we begin the salpingectomy. Here, we begin at the fimbriated end with the vessel sealer through the suprapubic port. The surgeon provides most of the necessary assistance, while the assistant provides gentle counter-traction, which improves the efficiency of the dissection. Care is taken to ensure that the fallopian tube is positioned parallel to the vessel sealing device, which optimizes exposure and ergonomics. Here, the fallopian tube is left attached to the uterus and is ultimately removed with the uterine specimen. In this scenario, we begin our dissection near the uterine cornu. We seal and divide the fallopian tube at the cornu until the mesosalpinx is reached. Again, care is taken to ensure that the fallopian tube and vessel sealer are positioned in parallel to optimize surgical efficiency. Sliding the vessel sealer upward while underneath the fimbriae ensures that no fimbriae are left behind. Once the fallopian tube is free, we recommend immediate removal as this small specimen can be easily lost within the pelvis. The area of dissection is then inspected for hemostasis. In certain situations, the vessel sealer is used through the lateral port when beginning the dissection at the fimbriated end. This optimizes tissue exposure and presentation. Care must be taken to identify the location of the IP ligament to avoid inadvertent injury to those vessels. Dissection then proceeds medially, taking care to hug the fallopian tube and avoid large mesosalpingeal vessels. In this case, the assistant is crucial in maintaining ideal tissue presentation. Any fimbriae that are left behind can be removed after completion of the salpingectomy. As the dissection proceeds medially along the length of the fallopian tube, the assistant releases the lateral grasper and repositions the tissue to maintain parallel tissue presentation to the vessel sealing device. As the uterine cornu is approached, the fallopian tube can either be left attached to the uterus as the rest of the hysterectomy is completed or can be amputated and removed separately. We generally suggest amputation followed by immediate removal as the dangling fallopian tube can obscure visibility during the remainder of the surgery. Performing the salpingectomy after controlling the uterine blood supply may be necessary if there is poor access to the fallopian tubes by obstructing pathology. Additionally, an enlarged uterus can place the fallopian tubes on significant tension, making manipulation difficult. This technique almost always requires an assistant to optimize tissue presentation as the fallopian tube is no longer held up by its attachments to the uterine cornu. The assistant also provides gentle countertraction to optimize the dissection. Dissection may begin either at the corneal or the fimbriated end. In this case, we begin at the corneal end. Dissection proceeds directly adjacent to the fallopian tube, taking care to avoid the IP ligament. Steady, gentle traction provided by the surgeon allows for efficient dissection. Again, the area of dissection is thoroughly inspected for hemostasis. Both the IP ligament and the ureter were safely away from the area of dissection. Here we approach the dissection from the fimbriated end. The tissue is positioned in parallel to the vessel sealer, which is slid upward underneath the fimbriae to ensure that none are left behind. The vessel sealer is also positioned away from the IP ligament to avoid inadvertent injury. 
care is taken to avoid dissecting near the blood supply of the ovary in order to prevent its devascularization. Since the vaginal cuff has not yet been closed, it provides a convenient way to remove the fallopian tubes. Opportunistic salpingectomy is a risk-reducing strategy for women at average risk of ovarian cancer. It can be performed at the time of hysterectomy or other pelvic surgery. The existing pelvic pathology dictates when to perform the salpingectomy as well as how to approach the procedure itself. Keys to optimizing the dissection include maximizing exposure to the fallopian tube, presenting the tissue in parallel to the vessel sealing device, and providing gentle, constant traction and counter-traction. The specimen should be removed immediately to prevent its loss in the pelvis.